What's up? What's up? Welcome to another episode of AI for Entrepreneurs. Woo, woo. We are in the building. Uh, we have a special guest, Mr. Parrish Patton, in the building. Uh, I'm your host, Ivan Lee Jackson, along with my partner, good friend, Christopher Lane. And um, let's get it. AI for Entrepreneurs, y'all. Parrish, man, what's good, man? Good to, good to have you on the show. Hey, uh, thank thank you for having me. And um, again, a congratulations on you guys taking this step forward. You know, I know it takes a lot of work to even get started. And, you know, this looks great here. And thank you for having thank me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Special announcement. Uh, we're actually now part of the, the, the Patent House group of podcasts, network of podcasts. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about um, just the the network um goes within it or not you know let, let the audience know well, well um the the patent house network or i would say community is a better word mm. is a group of podcasters who are looking to achieve the same goal and which is to give out valuable information to the listener or viewer and we work together in collaboration with doing business as far as uh for example right now i'm on you guys show Ivy Lee has already been on one of my shows, The Entrepreneur Kickback, twice. And, and, and it's a good way for podcasters. The objective is for podcasters to build and grow together. And that's why I started The Patent House, because um, a lot of people wanted to start and they didn't know where to start. And then once they started, they didn't know where to go from there. But the best way to go in any form of content creation is to find more peers within your particular niche or genre or, or whatever industry that is. But that's why I started it. Thank you for asking that. Oh, so sure, man. Now nah, you've been instrumental in, in, in terms of like giving us advice uh, in when getting started. Uh, I know a lot of the people that are within the, within the community, shout out to Ken Blank, shout out to Jeff, shout out to, shout out to everyone within that community, man. Look forward to be on their, on their show. Look forward to getting on our show. Um, but yeah, man, AI last week, Chris last week in AI. What, what, what we got on deck? last week in AI. All right. So to kick it off, we're actually going to talk about a new investment by Amazon. So recently, Amazon invested two point seven five billion dollars into Anthropic. And for those that don't know, or maybe haven't listened to any of our other shows, Anthropic are the creators of the Claude AI. And Claude right now, uh, it actually, this takes me right into the next topic for last week in AI. So Claude AI is currently the ringleader of the AI chatbots in the chatbot arena. Uh, and if you don't know what the chatbot arena is, it's a, it's a website. The link will be below in the comments. But the chatbot arena is essentially a place where a user can go and enter. It, it lets you enter a prompt. Then it generates multiple responses and you vote on which prompt or which, you know, response from the AI is the best. Based on that, it ranks the different chatbots that are available. And for the first time ever since its release, GPT-4 has been dethroned by Claude 3 Opus. So that Amazon just made a massive investment in it. They just outranked GPT-4. And one of the interesting things that I'm seeing is historically, anytime any other AI company has made a move, OpenAI was right on that within days. Like uh, they had GPT-3 and, um, you know, a new model came out that was really close or similar. Boom, 3.5 turbo. Uh, other models got close. Boom, GPT-4. They, they kept themselves so far ahead of every other AI model. But this time, it seems like Sam Altman's just kind of sitting on his hands going, I, I don't know. Uh, here's another AI-generated video we made. Uh, we got a robot, uh, but they're, but they, it's, it's like they're not really sure exactly what they're doing. They're trying to do too much now, and I think they're starting to fall behind, whereas historically, you would have been like, boom, here's GPT-4 Turbo or 4.5 Turbo or GPT-5 within days of being dethroned, but not this time. So I'm curious to see where this goes. 
I will say personally, I have switched from using as my what I'll call my daily driver. I don't use chat GPT anymore. I actually use the paid version of Claude 3 through the Anthropic website on their Opus model. They do have three different models. Opus is the one that has surpassed and beaten GPT-4. And then you have Sonnet, which is kind of like the middle child, which is, is very comparable to GPT-4. And then you have um, Haiku, which still surpasses chat GPT or OpenAI's 3.5 turbo model. It's not quite to four level, but it and it's their fastest model. It's like five times faster even than the GPT 3.5 Turbo. So Anthropic is really, really taking leaps and bounds and pushing OpenAI out of the out of the lead in like all around with their newest models. Thoughts? Is, Anything? I've just been rambling for a little bit. So <laughs> no, nah, that's good. That's good information. Cause like as you explain it, it's like it's so it's so many different AIs out here. And mm -hmm. the, instant, the instant feeling I got is uh, it kind of feels like the car industry. You know, you got this type of car, you got that type of car. This one goes that fast. This one's a little more reliable. This one's big. This one's small. This is this what sounds like the beginning of me for AI. It's just this whole industry that's moving forward and it's going to change. our. It already has changed our lives. But it's going to get I, better as we progress. A hundred percent. Exponentially better and at exponential speeds from what I've seen and what we've just been seeing since the kind of very first launch of OpenAI releasing ChatGPT to the public. Like where we are now from where we were, what, about a year and a half ago since it's been in existence is insane. The car analogy, that's a good, that's a great analogy. Like that's a great yeah, analogy. Yeah, that like, was really good. That's really where it's going to go. It's going to niche down, right? Like cause you, cause you have like this AI that's good for accomplishing this type of task, but you also do need the more reliable, cheaper version sometimes to 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 get it to the masses, right? But then you need like the the more powerful version for niche type things such as like it is like there's so many different levels of what you can accomplish with AI and so many ways you can take it and tweak it and 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 make it good for what you're trying to accomplish, whether it's quantity or quality in production, right? And, and like, it's really just the beginning. It's really just the beginning. It's really just the beginning, like in terms of like how everything's gonna keep getting niched down and customized for each specific end user, kind of like a car, right? Some are good yeah. for off-road, some are good for relaxing, cruising, some are good for zero to 60, some are electric, so, you know what I mean? Like there's, there's, there's niches and then there's sub niches within those niches. And, and that's really where AI You got to go test drive them all. See which one's going to suit you best, what your needs are. Like if you're going off-roading, you're going to go on, look at Jeeps, four-wheel drive vehicles. Or if you want to go for speed, go look at a sports car. Um, but I, and I am going to put not only the, I'm going to put the link to not only Anthropic's website so people can go take a look and try out Claude. I'm also going to put a link to the chatbot arena so everyone watching can go and uh, go vote, go see the difference, the, you know, go, go make put your prompt, get your responses, vote and kind of see where that goes. So I'm going to have that link as well. And then finally today. So this one's surprising because this is a uh, this is a name we haven't heard in this space. Ever. Uh, Apple. Okay. Apple has just announced that they, and this is actually newer than last week, so this is kind of but just recent in AI. Uh, Apple just announced that they have a new on-device AI that rivals GPT-4, and it's going to be built into Siri. And what makes this really exceptional for iPhone users, uh, I guess they, they were in talks to use Google Gemini. That must have fallen through. They decided to build their own model. Uh, what's really makes that exceptional and when one of the things that Tim Cook talked about was because it's on your device, it'll know what you're looking at. So if you're on a website or if you're <clears throat> looking through your contacts, you can hit up Siri and say, what is this or how do I do this? And it contextually knows what you're doing on your phone and can then use the AI to help answer that question or assist you in what it is you're trying to do. It's also unlike other AIs where you can kind of give it an input and get a response. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
because it's built into the phone, it'll be able to do things. So you could say, hey, Siri, you know, like you can already tell Siri to do certain things, set alarms, do that, add a reminder. But adding AI into that, hey, Siri, write me up a little summary for Joe to blah, 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 and send an email uh, at 10 o'clock tonight. So just the, the ability, because the AI, nope, Siri, please don't try to do that. Uh, because it's built into the phone, it, it's really, really, really going to be exceptionally impactful for Apple users. Well, that's exciting because I'm an Apple user and I... Yeah. Oh, yeah. I can't when wait. It to, <laughs> when it comes to technology, I really love... I love... And there's, a lot of, there's a lot of debate about this, right? In terms of like the contextualization of that technology or, or the, the personalization of that technology. So, for example, a lot of people don't like personalized ads. A lot of people don't like mm -hmm. the fact that like your TV is listening to you and if you say certain things and you turn your TV on, it's like right there for you. Right. You ever walk past your TV while it's off and like mention a movie or mention a TV series and all of a sudden or Google a TV series or review on a TV series and you turn on your TV and that just happens to be the featured TV series. Right. Yeah. And and, and I get it. Right. Like I get I get the 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 feeling of invasion within invasion to someone's privacy. But at the same token, I like when technology makes things easy for me and 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 caters to me and, and, and personalizes and contextualizes to my life. And so to have AI built in directly to my phone that I use like the most out of, out of, out of like a lot, many hours a day, um, mm -hmm. it's just, it's, it's beautiful. Like make my life easier, make everything in my life more efficient. I want to walk past right. like If I'm talking about, uh, if I'm like, if I'm talking about going on a diet, for instance, and then all of a sudden I start seeing all these diet things everywhere. That's only beneficial to me. Yeah, that's yes, helpful. the the advertisers get they're selling things to me. The marketers, it's great for the marketing as well. But from a consumer standpoint, if I'm talking about going on a diet, I want diet things. I want to see information about diets and different types of things that are going to help me do what I set out to do. Yeah. Yeah, no, 100%. Now, I could see if you're doing some illegal shit, then absolutely not. Like, don't be listening to me. <laughs> like, I don't want to be like, oh, so I got this deal going on and then start seeing ads for the police are coming because you were talking about selling cocaine. Um, so maybe in those instances, it's not so great. But for me, I'm not doing anything like that. So. No, nah, I, I, uh, I agree. Uh, I notice I, I've been noticed that a lot lately. Like, I'm big on like during research i do that for fun for the most part mm -hmm. and like like for example of like something that only pertains to me i'm like lurking for like all natural cleaners so all i don't have to buy like bleach wipes all the time you know and then I'm, I'm talking about it with my wife and then all of a sudden everything on my phone is Oh, you get some lemon, get some vinegar, get a spray bottle. I'm getting all these recipes to get house cleaners. And it's mm -hmm. like, it's wild. And it's like, yeah, that's that's only going to pertain to me. You know, it's like I'm a little bit of a naturalist when it comes to like, you know, using the environment or just being healthy overall. So it's like I've noticed that's been popping up into my phone more and more every day. Actually, I yeah. just look at a recipe where... It was one on Google, and it also goes on YouTube and Facebook. I'm getting the same content on all three, and I never typed any of these things in, you know. So obviously they're listening. Right. To me. And if you have like uh, those uh, like the Alexa devices in your house, I know I have one in every single room just because it makes it easy for me to talk to my house. Um, I have no doubt they're listening. I have no doubt the phones are listening. Everything, everything you have is listening. Yeah, and I appreciate it. Like, listen, make the make make things more efficient. Like, I I research movies before I watch a movie or a TV series. I, I like to you know make sure I know what I'm getting into. Like, that's a time investment, right? So, um, I, I I'll I'll put some research into that, and you know I I log on to my TV after researching it, and I'll see it like right there featured, right? Like whatever service that I happen to have, it's right there. Hit play, mm -hmm. and that's cool. It saves time, man. It's like. Those little, those, it, 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 it be those little things where I feel like technology starts impacting our lives. We don't necessarily know it or feel it. We sometimes get annoyed with it. 
you know, at, at face value because it's like, how how dare you listen to me? But at the same token, like, I love Synergy and how they put all that together, the ecosystem. Like, it's just, it's more efficient, right? As a consumer, as a seller. And like, you know, maybe that's because we're we're in both ends of that ecosystem, right? Like we, right. Use it to, we, we market stuff, we have products, we sell things, services, but also we're consumers. And so as a consumer, it's helpful. As a as a business, as a service provider, it's helpful being able to reach people who actually want your service at that time. You get what I mean? Like for the natural hundred percent. Yeah, they're natural a uh, naturalist products. For them to be able to reach you in your time of interest while you're, you know, digging deeper into that into that uh, niche, is is beneficial to you and them. And so, yeah, no, I, I love I love when like technology really like yeah. caters to you on an individual level. So, and, and Apple and AI, you know, Apple doesn't Apple never really releases anything unless it's fully mature. So, mm-hmm. you know, with AI like system wide on their phone, like is that's that's going to be exciting. really excited for that we went off a, a little tangent there but that's all right that's all right Gary, so are you an <laughs> apple guy or android guy i'm whatever works um it's whatever's okay. at my disposal at the moment um but i i i've used apple products as well you know um i got an android right now but i was gonna say that sounds like that sounds like you're an android it sounds like you're an android guy <laughs> well, I started. I st- see. I used to. I used to sell cell phones, so it's like okay. I know a little bit more. But um, I've had my share of um, iPhones too. Um, there's things I like about it more than an Android. There's some things I don't like more about it. But um, no, we were talking about this the other day. And it's kind of like you know, I also see AI kind of going in this direction as well, right? Mm-hmm. Apple versus Microsoft. With, with, with computers also versus Android with cell phones. Apple, if you know the technology, then you know that Samsung and they usually always had the better screens. The They were more cutting edge. They usually had more power. Um, like, you know, if you looked at the specs, they would usually win on specs, right? Apple, while usually losing on specs, was the more catered product. So if you're less technical, like you can just give someone an Apple phone and it's like, oh man, I'm, boop, boop, boop. it's real intuitive, right? Like my kids use Apple phones. Android is a little bit harder, right? You can get lost in the options. You can get lost in those extra features, that extra controllability that you have. It's, you know, it's open source versus a clo- more of a closed experience with Apple. And when we talk about like how AI kind of niches out, that's kind of something that we thought about and think about as, you know, you're aware of like op- our optimized AI, you know, so we're into like building AI. And, you know, that's just something that I think a lot of AI providers and, and people within our industry are going to have to take account of, right? Like, because there's benefits to both approaches, right? There's benefits to that closed wall. Everything is simple, intuitive to use. There's benefits to that Apple style or Apple esque approach. But it's also benefits to just opening it all the way up, giving you as much power as you possibly can, a much minute control over all those different features like you would on an Android phone and letting them just run wild as well. So it's like it's, 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 a, it's a balance. And I, don't know, I, I just I thought it pertained to, to AI pretty well. I, I, I agree with you as far as that sentiment, like as far as the user interface. Um, definitely, I feel as though Apple does have a, a much better user interface and what makes them stand out, like even if even if they don't have the specs compared to like the Galaxy, whatever, they have a better ecosystem than Samsung as far as pertaining to mm-hmm. what Apple delivers as far as the software. Like Samsung, it goes more than just cell phones, you know. They have an operating system for the television. They have appliances. They have their own laptops, too. Not as popular, but they have a wide range of products. You know, Apple is really good at focusing on what they want for their customer. And that's the strong part of, about it. And, it. and it shows in their devices, too. And that's the part I like about Apple. But yeah, that, that's you know, what it is for me, too. It's, it's the ecosystem. I've switched. I always have Apple computers, but I've switched. I had a Samsung phone and I couldn't, 
<clears throat> excuse me. I couldn't copy and paste between devices. I couldn't drag my mouse off of my screen and onto different, you know, like I couldn't text message from my computer anymore. Like just having the entire ecosystem is where I'm kind of locked into just Apple and Apple only. But there's a give and take on that ecosystem, right? So the reason that ecosystem is so strong is because they can't, they wall parts of it off. Hence they've been mm -hmm. sued and all that, you know. That, so. Yeah, yeah. But, but like, but when you wall it off, you, you can make more stringent requirements in terms of like the quality of apps that you allow on it. You can kind of tailor the experience. Oh, and they make the hardware and the software, which kind of puts them at an advantage. Whereas yeah. like Samsung makes a phone. Google makes an operating system and they have to kind of be married together right. on the device that you're getting, whereas Apple makes both. So they can right. build hardware specific to their software and make software specific to their hardware specs as they as they advance. Which is why you see it a lot more things work a lot more seamlessly within the Apple ecosystem than it does on Windows or on Samsung or like Android devices. Yeah, that's amazing. <clears throat> Google Pixel is another good example of that because Google makes Android and or like it makes that like has that Android operating system and they make the phone here. So now on those ecosystems on the Google Pixel phone, some of the things that they could do are really incredible. My brother uses it. Um, <clears throat> And just some of the things you could do with the Pixel phones, it like uh, you could take like five or six different like group shots, for instance, and then you could use an AI that's built into the phone to basically find the best face facing forward, looking at the camera out of the whole series of images. And it'll just generate a final image where everyone is nicely looking at the camera and smiling happily. And it'll do it that's all cool. on a one touch, like make it, you know, enhance, essentially. Yeah, And that's what I would imagine Apple adding into their system when they come with their system wide AI like that yep is, is that type of stuff but a more matured polished version as oh, of course of course but I think that wraps up last week in AI and now we're going to move to our what we just call mystery segment we should just call it random segment since that's essentially what it is every week uh but this week we're going to talk about AI for music generation, and I want to show everyone something. I went down a massive rabbit hole, and I'm only going to spend a little bit of time on showing you the actual music you could generate using AI. Then what I want to do is I really want to focus on having a little bit of a discussion on what the repercussions of this ability are within the music industry or the entertainment industry because i know we've discussed specifically uh video generation with sora on hollywood but uh, let me just let me share my screen real quick and we should be able to hear the sound again like i said i went a little overboard so there's a lot here let me go to my library and let me find one. Oh, uh, you know what i'll use that uh artificial heart one ivan chris produced the whole albums I literally, I, I do. I, I have uh, eight songs. I have an EP right now. Um, <laughs> but so this is a song I, I created. It's lit. I just told it to basically create an AI themed um, upbeat 80s dance song with male vocals. And just listen to this for, and let me know if you guys can't hear it. Can you hear it? Yeah, yeah. It made the lyrics, the beat, lit everything. Completely generated with AI. Made album art. I love off to it too. Yeah, no, it's it's wait till it gets to the wait till it gets to the hook. I'm not gonna play too much longer, but I wanna get to the chorus. All right, but so now that was completely AI generated. Yo, play play the one you made for me. This the, the second one. Why? Which one was that? Um, Do you remember what it was called? I I I literally have something like three hundred songs in here. I can find out. It was a uh, faded strings, I believe. No, no, no. Got it. These are yours. Sunday is probably a success. Electric Voodoo. Oh, that was the, yeah, no. Um, that's the corporate ones. Electric I I, Voodoo? I gave him like a prompt, for like a Jimi Hendrix, a Jimi Hendrix type, type solo or some like blues background. 
this one? If not, it's like here. This one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, just like a Jimi Hendrix blues rock psychedelic yes, instrumental. But again, completely built from a prompt, no human interaction with that whatsoever. Um, it'll make up to two minutes, but it'll also, there's at least this tool. So this, this tool is called Suno AI, S-U-N-O dot AI. And again, I'll put this link so you can go try it. You can actually generate, I think, up to like five songs for free if you want to try it out. And then uh, even after that, a subscription for like, it'll you can generate up to like 500 songs in a month is only something around $10 a month. So it's it's not even that expensive to use. That's why uh, I have some three, four hundred songs already because I just went down a rabbit hole because I thought this was amazing. Um, and yeah, I tried, tried different genres. I made like a children's song. I did make I made a lot of like pop punk, like early 2000s, like that yellow card Blink-182 style, because that's kind of what I grew up on. And I wanted to see how closely I could match the genre. And very is the answer. Uh, any genre I've tried, I tried, I was able to really, really match the genre pretty easily. And with a few little prompts, like right here, you can, you can literally just put in a description of what you want and a little bit of info about the style you want, and it'll make a song. You can put it in custom mode if you have your own lyrics, uh, and you give it a little bit more information, you give it a title and it'll generate based on that. But for the most part, a short description of what you what it is you're looking for, and it'll make you an entire song. Let's make a song, yo. Right. Uh, I right. give give me something. Paris. Give me something. Paris. <laughs> give give, give uh, us a prompt. Give us a prompt. Give us a prompt. Give us. Uh, what do you want to hear? Um. Let's see. Um. Let's let's go for like a a, a Motown seventy style. Ooh. Motown Ooh. seventy song about what? Love. Yeah, yeah, about love. Yeah, 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 yeah. It gotta be about love, right? That's what they were singing about. Gotta be. Right. Um, all right, that's it. That's all we're giving it. Motown seventy song about love. Uh, it sometimes it generates in a couple seconds. Other times it could take up to a minute. Um, and so obviously, the more the more we give it, the be the better we could tailor it. But we're just gonna give it. All right, soul bit. Motown upbeat is what it gave it for the style. It called the song "Love at First Sight," and when this generates, you'll see it's gonna have lyrics on the left hand side here. And it's even going to make album art for it. And one of the, oh, yep, so, all right, so we're getting our album art. Uh, so one of the other things that's good about this, while it can only generate up to two minutes, it lets you continue that song. So there's an option on some of the, like, if I pick one of these, I could say, continue from this song, and I could pick what time period I want to continue from, and it'll make another part to that song. And you can do that again and again and again. So while it can only generate up to two minutes at a time, you could make a six-minute song using this tool. All right, Love at First Sight, Soul Motown Upbeat. I never fully love could be so divine But when I met you, boy, you crossed the line You walked me to the light, turned my world around Now I'm singing a sweet Motown sign Your love is like the melody, it's in my soul and so that's one, and it makes two at a time, so it gives you two options right off the bat. I never believed love be so divine. Oh. Right? Yeah. Across the line. Ooh, into my life. Turn my yeah. Now I'm seeing a sweet motel sound. Your love is like a melody. It's in my soul. I want to hear the chorus on this one. Yeah, this one's got me. No town love. Yeah. Oh, all right, but again, I, we literally wrote Motown 70 song about love. That is the only instruction we gave it. And it just gave us two songs. 
And I could keep generating over and over and over again until I find one that I really like and then build on that. And give it more specific, right? So you can slow down the tempo. Yep. You can make it more sound like this. Like, style. yeah, make it upbeat, slow down. I can make it a ballad. You, yeah, and just kind of expand yeah. on it till you get that sound that you want and then build on that to make a longer song. That's wow. So, yeah, so again, <laughs> I, I don't want to spend too long because like, I will build forever. And I don't want to do that for the whole entirety of the podcast. But seeing what you could generate with just a few words, I it almost and, and the vocal, like if no one told me that was AI generated and they were just playing me a song, I I honestly wouldn't know, especially since nowadays there's some there's auto tune, there's so much electronic built into a lot of the music. You wouldn't know if it was someone in a studio that added that effect or if it was just because the AI voice had a little bit of a twing or like a twinge to it or a little bit of a, you know, um, AI sounding type of thing because it's built right into when people are on stage. Even they run everything through amplifiers, through all of the uh, the computer system nowadays. What are your guys thoughts on how this might impact the music industry? I think that's one of the one? <laughs> the, I think I think that's the big elephant in the room there. Um it's hard for me it's hard for me to speak how exactly this is going to affect the music music industry. I know it's definitely going to make an impact. Um cuz what I just heard like that second song, it sounded like a song in a commercial. Like it felt like a song you could have gave to like Kroger or, or Target or something. Mm -hmm. So, like even with that, you know, because normally people do create these jingles. You know, what I'm saying a lot of times people think yep. of songs. They think of songs over the radio. But what about your commercials? You know, there are people who make songs exclusively for that. For that. That's the biggest issue I see. As far as AI, now I don't know how to fix it. Um, my question is: Is can you copyright an AI-generated song? So, at least with this particular service, because trust me, I looked. Like I said, I've made an entire album. It's on my Apple Music now. Um, I just made a bunch of catchy earbug songs that I want to listen to. You cannot resell at least again with this one you cannot resell the audio that you generate uh, but you can use it if you have a paid license or like a paid subscription through them they do give you the rights to be able to like i could use it as background music for this podcast for instance or i could use it in an ad that we run or in a video that we create so i could create background music for things like that that you can do and you can give it away for free. So I could even use it in an instance. Let's say I made an album. I could give away the album in exchange for people to give me their email address and phone number so that I can sell and market to them in the future. So, so there's use cases for it, but you can't necessarily like I don't own the rights to that song based on at least this company's terms and conditions. I had my AI read it through and I asked it a bunch of questions. I was smart. Hey, I'm sitting. That's, that's a nugget right there. I don't read anything through any. Once it's more than like a paragraph long, I feed it to the AI and ask it the questions that I want. I don't read anything anymore. Write that down, ladies and gentlemen. Write that down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think Literally it's fed at the. Yeah. No, no, no. Think, Ivan, go, go. I think kind of like Sora, uh, the video generated, generated AI. Yep, yep. It's going to open up the door for entrepreneurs specifically. In terms of in creators, right? Because now you can create background music for your clips. You can create uh, background music for your content. Like you don't have to search other people's instrumentals. You can just use your own, create your own instrumental for for, for, for your own moment. Uh, if you're making a movie, let's say you're using AI to create your movie, you can now make your background music and all that stuff that goes goes with that that using AI as well. So it just further democratizes access for all creators and all entrepreneurs, right? Like you, before you would have to have like audio team create the, you know, or a composer create the mm -hmm. music sounds and all that stuff that goes with your movie, right? And you would have to have a whole production team to record the video and 
actors to act their, act everything out, right? Like if you had an idea and you want to get the movie out of your head, there was a whole thing that goes with putting that together, right? You got to film and create a movie. Now you can, the video and the, all the actors and all that stuff is done via AI and the audio, you can literally do the entire like, audio stuff with the AI. So it's like, just think about like the ideas that are, that's going to be coming out of people's heads, right? Like when, 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 they, when this really matures and you marry those two things together, like the, I, the, 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 the people who were limited before who may have had the greatest movie. I, I'm just a point you made before, but you know, you could have like the greatest movie in your head, but if you don't necessarily get a movie studio to believe in you and fund you to, 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 you know, millions of dollars to film this movie, it's not going to get out of your head. But with AI, a lot of these ideas are going to be getting out of a lot of people's heads who might not have came across that funding. And but here's the other part to that, because you don't even necessarily need to have an idea in your head because you, so we have the video generative AI, we have the audio generative AI, but we also have text generative AI. So you could just know I need or I want to make a story or a movie or a short film about insert subject here. It doesn't matter what it is. And the AI can actually write the script for you first. So you don't even need to have an idea like a script in your head. You don't need to be able to write the script. You could just have an idea like, hey, if I you know how sometimes like you're sitting, you're watching like whatever you're, you're bullshitting with your friends. You're like, yo, you know, what would make a really great movie like this concept here. You can then to go take that, run with it, go to AI, have it write a script on that concept, then generate the video and generate the audio to go with it fully without having to, you know, all of like all the restrictions that you just talked about, right. that those won't exist anymore. There's no barrier. You don't have to go find a film crew. You don't have to go find the cameras. You don't need to go hire musicians. You can just generate all of that sitting at your desk. You just need the vision. Maybe ideas and the word vision. You just have to have the vision of, but being able to execute on that vision is exactly just, you know, AI. Like is going to help so many people who may not have been able to execute or may not have had the resources that it required previously for AI to execute on that type of vision. Now it's like you can just do it, right? Like it's, it takes away excuses. It takes it gives. It empowers so many. It's it's incredibly exciting time to be alive. I, I yeah, definitely I, agree with that. No, go ahead, Chris. No, 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 no. Please, please. Um, I was going to ramble. So after you, sir. You no, know, I, um, I, I definitely agree with you with that. It feels like um, everything, all the all the barriers are being knocked down as far as um, whatever you want to create. And even in the financial markets, you know, I'll even add crypto to that. Everything is becoming mm -hmm. decentralized in a way to where you have control of everything that you hold. You know, that's through AI. So you can create whatever you want to create. You know, you can help start a business wherever you want to start. You can do crypto, which you don't even have to be on the government's money, you know, and AI is tapping into crypto as well. So... I think within the next 20 years or so, there's going to be a drastic change on how we create and how we interact with certain with certain products such as radio, television, YouTube, etc. Which I'm starting to contact it all as one thing is content creation. Cause, oh, yes. Yeah, it's all content creation because a YouTube channel, a podcast, a television show all has the same elements. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. It's yeah. just now we can expand them to multiple elements so we can all grow. So I, um, I'm looking forward to see what this looks like. Like, I'm just learning a lot just by sitting here with you guys. Like, yeah, I need to go on Suno and, and make me some uh, make me some songs or something real quick. Because <laughs> uh, I've been there. I've asked an artist, hey, can I use your song? You know what I'm saying? I can do this, do that. Um, and it's been times I even got permission, but then I'll run it through, um, well, I was using that at the time, GarageBand. The copyright check or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I'll run it through yeah. GarageBand. They say, nope. So I was like, ah, oh, man. So now I got to extract it another way. Hopefully no one still comes for me still, you know, mm -hmm. AI does that. That sounds like it knocks, it gets rid of all of that. 
you know, you can find what you're looking for. Like you said, a catchy, like you said, Chris, a catchy tune that you would listen to. Yeah. Oh. Easy. Yeah, I, that's it, yeah. Like, yeah, I just wanted music. Like I like, Ivan and I were actually talking about this yesterday. I just, I, I like new music and I like songs. I have ADHD, so I'll just repeat the same song over and over again a lot. So I like catchy, upbeat songs that I can do that to. And a lot of times, maybe an album will have one of those and they're few and far between. But with this just yesterday, I was able to make eight and literally populate an entire EP full of just those catchy songs that I would repeat over and over and over and over again. Um, so even just for my personal listening and enjoyment, it was massively worth every cent I spent this month on this license. I think the time frame in terms of like the impact on the music, TV, just content creation industry, especially at the bigger levels, right? The corporation level. Because I think mm-hmm. I agree with you. Like, it's all content, right? Whether it's someone shooting a podcast, someone telling a story through a bunch of tweets, right? Like it's all content at the end of the day. It's just, you know, some companies put more money into it. When I'm thinking like the bigger studios, Disney, et cetera, right? Right, but right. I think a lot of that is going to change. And I think the, the time frame within that being changed is much shorter than the 20 years you mentioned. I agree a hundred percent. I said two years tops. I don't even give it that two years. I would say two, two years. years in terms of like the capabilities of, of being able to really, really do it. But then like in terms of like it being the seismic shift in terms of like, like where these right, the full industry are. adoption. Yeah, of yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, like five, 10 years, like five years. Mm-hmm. Until like the first fully produced AI movie is out. Yeah. Right? You I can see that. And like, think about it. Like that literally cuts out the 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 current movie industry, right? You don't Entirely. Need to, you don't need to go to Disney to get your superhero idea created. You don't need that visual effects, and you don't need that production company, and and and, and, the, and the millions they need to invest in the hiring actors and, and all of that to make it work, right? To make a to make a superhero movie. You, just, you don't have to worry about the divas arguing over their contract and what percentage of the royalties they want at the end. And like, you know, you, all of that's gone because you can just make new characters every single time. Yeah. I'm sure so you'll, like, you'll be able like, to repeat was, characters. Yeah. So like, yeah. like it's just, I think it's going to be a seismic shift. Uh, same thing with the music industry. Uh, you know, like, again, the more tools you have, Think about just think about that, right? Like you can make your own instrumentals, right? Now you're a rapper, you, mm-hmm. you're trying to get on, like you can literally make your own type of beats, beats that sound good to you. Like it just it just takes away. Right. You don't need the producer anymore. If you've got the words, you just need a beat. Right. right. Or you could just have AI create the words for you and just as long as you got the style, like it just it just takes away so many yeah. uh, barriers of entry and just empowers so many, man. Yeah. It is exciting. And I think the biggest thing is going to be people having to, because there's definitely going to be pushback at first. I could see Hollywood massively fighting this. I could see the music industry artists even massively fighting this. Um, but really, yeah, that people are just going to have to adopt a new normal. Even just the fact, like, I'm going to use Taylor Swift as an example. I don't like to talk to her. But she broke away from the music industry and turned herself into a fucking billionaire. Um, she, the, the, I don't know if you know, not many people follow Taylor Swift probably in this audience, or maybe they do. I don't know. My wife does. So, but she basically, they wouldn't let her buy the rights to her own music. And the record label was just being for lack of a better term, massive dicks about it. And what she ended up doing was because of the way, and she already had her following and she already had her fans, the way that the contract is worded, they owned the rights to the mastered songs. Not to the lyrics, not to the music itself, just the mastered songs. So she went and took her lyrics and her music and re-recorded all of her old albums her way. So now there's like, you know, this album, and then there's this album, Taylor's version. And nobody plays the old mastered versions that I think Sony Records owns, or whoever it is that owns the old mastered versions. They're basically useless. And she was offering to buy the rights from them. And they just refused. So she cut out the music industry completely and recorded her own music. Artists now have blown up massively by promoting on TikTok that never ever had to touch a music studio there's there's an artist called Swaco. he used to be like a mumble rap artist and he had a record label 
and he wanted to start making a different type, like alternative, like emo style, like punk rock music. And his record label was like, no, absolutely not. Not going to happen. This is what you're signed on for. So he cut them out. Like, cool. This is my record label with you. I'm going to go pr produce and promote my own music through social media because the biggest the draw to having a record label back in the day was just the connections the industry had and those record labels had with being able to promote your music. But social media has removed the need for record labels. So there's already a massive shift in how the music industry is being affected by just the new generation of technology. So I think bringing AI into the fold, while there'll be some pushback, people are just going to have to start accepting that anybody can create music now. Anyone can promote music now. And what people like and want to consume, they're going to consume. They're going to like it. And that's that there's not going to be people are going to start to lose control and they're going to grasp at every little thing. They're going to try to push legislation through by throwing massive amounts of money at the government saying, you know, put pass a bill saying you cannot absolutely not release AI generated music. It's illegal. They're going to do everything they can to keep their power. Uh, but I think they're going to be fighting a losing battle. I agree. People are going to consume what they go, what they want to consume. So exactly, thing, whether it's AI generated, whether it's human generated, if it pleases a subset of people, that subset of people are going to support it. And exactly, that's what it is. That's just you know, capitalism. Oh. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and, and and it's like even with even with um, like the bigger corporations, they're going to have to. They're, they're going to try to fight this. But at the same time, you can use it too. <laughs> you know? you can yeah, use exactly. It too. <laughs> so, and, 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 you know, the big corporation, you have all the data to make whatever it is product that you're trying to make, whether it's a movie or a song, you have the data. So just use it. You can go build your own AI that'll do something special that other people don't. You have the money. Don't pay artists. Pay AI companies um, to make creates, you your own AI. <laughs> but that's the, that's where creativity and the vision. See, like creativity and vision is different, right? And, and so it's like you can have all the research, but if you don't have the vision to really pull it off and to prompt. But with AI, the resources, you pay people with vision. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you still have to, you know, that 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 vision, vision, that that like 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 that vision before you would have to like partner with a production company to execute that vision. Now, right. you have a lot more independence in terms of just executing that vision without the production company, whether you're creating mm -hmm. albums, whether you're creating movies, whatever type of content you're creating, you can like, it's like, it, it, it's just, it's, it's just, you're so empowered. Like now you can start doing like multi media, like you can have part of your story on Twitter, part of your story on YouTube, part of your story in a podcast. You can mix it like this. So many different things you can do, and again, just the more the more empowered creators are to create, the more they're going to create. And at that point, you know, cream rises to the top. And whether it's however it's created, it's just going to be a lot more stuff out there, and the cream is going to rise to the top. And that's and eventually some of that cream is not necessarily going to be from those big production studios. It's going to be from just supremely talented visionaries who are now empowered because of AI to be able to get that stuff out there. And you know, to me, that's what's like really, really, really exciting. Uh, so, so I which, think that's going to wrap up real quick. Yeah. So I want, let's, let's, let's wrap this, uh, this music generated. I'm um, really, we should have called this content cre or AI for content creation, but that's all right. Now let's move into our main segment here, which is, uh, the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Parrish Patton, our special guest today. We're going to talk about how we're going to kind of continue the conversation we're having about how AI is affecting the podcast industry and really, um, you know, your work by, you know, in itself. And we probably should have started with this when we introduced you, but why don't you take the stage and just tell us a little bit about you. Tell our listeners, you know, about you, who you are, what you do. You, you got the spotlight, Mr. Parrish. Okay, cool. Appreciate it. Um, well, I'm Parrish Patton. I'm a, I'm a serial entrepreneur. And um, what I'm doing currently is um, I have a podcast network where I produce and help people create podcasts. Um, a few of those, um, 
the Entrepreneur Kickback, which I host and produce. Um, Bullish Picks Podcast. Um, it's a podcast about the stock market and um, Career Fireside, which we help, which is a show that helps people get it the most out of their W two jobs or what they do mm-hmm. for their everyday work. They, um, well, that's interesting. Uh, I had to check that out. Yeah, I um, I became a podcast addict around. 2014, 2015, I became a podcast addict and um, I wanted to start one. So I went down this rabbit hole, just, just learning, learning, learning. And then an opportunity to do one in a studio. I said it's about 2015, 2016. And I started that show with my buddy, my buddy, um, Grim, salute to hell. We did the Be Before A podcast. You know, we'll just sit down, we'll talk about video games, and we even play them live in the studio. Mm-hmm. So we did that for about six months. Six months, and I realized if you get a couple of things, you can start a podcast. And that was even then. That was even then. Right, right. So let's give it another couple years. Trial, trial and error, you know. Um, I'm more of a work with what you got kind of guy, you know, all right. I had my MacBook that was running for a year that went down, got another laptop, tried about 16 different microphones, um, <laughs> all within a reasonable budget. I never checked a microphone. That was more than 250. Um, I can say nothing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, um, eventually I, I built the show, I built, I built, I built my first, my what's distinctly my second podcast. My second podcast, piece by piece, you know what I'm saying? Because once I started, I wasn't going to stop and I was going to keep going. So um, uh, I got enough. So you got to do. <laughs> yeah, I got enough equipment at the time to get started. I did all my research. I figured out what worked for me, which were only about four, four items work for me normally. So um, after that, I had to figure out a top. Figure out a top. Here's all. So, um, my podcast is pretty boring if you don't have something to talk about. Exactly. So, (laughs) so one day, this is a long story too. Um, That's all right. We got time. Take your time. time. One day I was over, um, a family member's house and we were sitting down, you know, and this is a family event. So it's Mm -hmm. barbecue, it's wine, it's beer, et cetera. Other things. Um, we sitting there and I'm talking, you know, with some of the family and the conversation leads to buying apartment buildings. Okay. And a great conversation, great conversation. We talking about different types of strategies. Um, it carried over to single family homes, duplexes, and then it went to go building trusses. Like the conversation went on for hours and, and, we was talking all business, talking all business. something financially related. And I was like, I can go all night. And I said, that was weird. That was a weird kickback. It's like an entrepreneurial kickback. Mm-hmm. It's been off to the races ever since. Like, I, I ran with that. Um, the same family member, House was over. He came on the show twice. We talked some more about it. Ivan Lee has been on. And I found out the topic I want to talk about is the topic usually your friends or your close circle is not talking about. We're not talking about right. how, we can, how can we build together or what did I do to do this and you could do it too. Or even just another curiosity. You know, that's fine. So I started that show. So I needed guests. Yeah. So what I did after that was I went in my I went into my contact list. I had an iPhone at the time, uh, <laughs> and I went through every person I met ever. If I had your phone number, if I met you, if it was five years ago, I didn't care. I called and I told everybody what I was doing. Hey, I want you on as a guest. You come on my show. We can have a conversation. You know, these are people I met at networking events, family members. Friends that I respect that professionally, I respect. everybody. everybody, every I mean it, everybody. It took me two days to do it. <laughs> so, the 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 response was majorly positive. 
But what happened after that was the next question was, how do I start mine? Like, um, almost 90% of the time, it was, how do I start mine? Right. Like, yeah, this was really fun. I enjoyed this. Like, I want to do this too. Help me. Yeah. And, and that started before I recorded any episode for the Entrepreneur Kickback. But as I produced episodes and then I blasted out those episodes to the same people, yeah, yep. was, the questions really came back. Okay. How do I start one? And that led me to um, giving free consultations. Um, and to producing other people's shows, salute to King Blank Sorrell. Um, that's the Bullish Picks podcast, helping people um, navigate the mean streets of Wall Street. Um, and it also led to this partnership that we have here. Because um, also during this journey, you learn how hard it really is. <laughs> you know, just creating a show consistently. And letting people know that it's out is a job in itself. But then, like, really, really growing and monetizing your show, it takes a lot of work. I'm not going to lie to anyone who's paying attention to this here. A lot of times you hear this YouTube stuff, they say, well, you could just, it's simple, but it does take work. It does take a grind. And it does take a strategy. Now, does that mean not do it? Absolutely. If you have something to say, do it. I personally believe that at Content creation is similar to like a book, which a book is a form of content as well. But that means everybody has something they can give to someone else as far as their perspective on whatever it is that they have. And now I developed a plan passion of helping people flesh that out, particularly businesses as well, because a lot of times businesses, that's who that's who's looking for the message. You know, so I've been helping businesses. Hey. You don't got to overthink it. Overthink it. Figure out what you want to say. We record it and we put it out there and I'll show you how. That was a long winded answer, but I'm not used to talking about myself. Usually I'm on the other end like you guys. <laughs> yeah, it's the hardest. I hate when people ask that question. So it's my favorite one to ask first. <laughs> it is always a long story, right? Like it has to it be is. a long it story is. for it to really... Be meaningful, right? Like if you, you're just like I woke up to start a podcast, and it's like it's no real, it's no real like struggle in that. Like I don't, I don't want to. You can't relate like, to that. Yeah, yeah oh, exactly. You you want me to go deeper because the, the struggle is definitely there. Because uh, let's see, because in between that during the pandemic, uh, um, oh yeah, how, how I because I couldn't I couldn't go to work, and um. I couldn't go to work and I'm asthmatic. So I have underlying symptoms, symptoms. So stay clear. So right, I, right, right. So I had to figure out how to do something. I had like a couple of things I needed. I have an audio recorder and I had a microphone, but I just need to get a decent, a better running laptop. But I, I have a job coming in. Now my bills are paid. I'm fine. Right, right. But a $2,000 laptop is a little bit of an extravagant expense when there's no more money coming in. But what a lot of people don't know about me is my very first business, similar to Ivan Lee, was e-commerce. Um, I was yep. selling I was selling cookware um, on a dropship site. And then okay. that, mig that migrated to be the selling things on eBay. And I've always sold things on eBay. So during that time, the pandemic. I was trying to figure out what can I do to get this more equipment so I can get this podcast up and running. And I'm sitting in my office and I have this massive video game collection. <laughs> I'm, I mean, not massive, but it's a couple thousand dollars worth of stuff. So, right. There's some stuff you can sell. Yeah. So that's what I did. So I sold a portion of that and I got about a couple grand. And then I said, huh. That was that's pretty easy, you know, because I have experience of selling on eBay. I, that's one right. of my um, that's one of my uh, arsenals. I pull out my back pocket. So after that, after that I went to another friend. He said, "Hey, I want to sell my video games." So he had all these old and um Super Nintendo games in the box, complete. Oh, so, wow! All right, 
So I bought the entire lot from him for about three hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. Like I say, if, if he doesn't know the value, you're not going to put in the time and the work to list them, take pictures, sell it on eBay. It's it's worth a lot less than what you can get it for to actually put in. Like you said before, you got to put in the work, the grind. You can't just list the lot or, you know, I have some games. Come buy them. It doesn't work that way. Uh-uh. Uh, I, I ended up selling that lot for over five thousand dollars. Damn, that was that was more... that's a return on investment right there. <laughs> yeah. Um... And I bought another lot for two hundred with PlayStation One games, and I sold that one for about another eight hundred dollars. So that was enough money for me to parlay into podcasting. Which after mm-hmm. I parlayed that money, that led to the uh, conversation over my family member's house, you know, because I had like this wad of money in my pocket. And right. I'm like, I'm trying to figure out what to do next with it, but. It, but it it was it was crazy because like a month before that you like you scratch your head like what I'm gonna do I can't go to work and all this you get this anxiety and this fear and it starts kicking in but you know for my entrepreneurs out there that's good for you because once that once that's that when you fear, do your best work yeah that's when you think <laughs> yeah that's that's when you think you start you start thinking you know and I remember a time yeah. after that I remember a time after that. I was like, dang, what I'm going to do? And Sutton told me to open up my crypto wallets. Wow. <laughs> and I found out I had like over $1,000 of just me playing around and forgetting about it. Yeah. Just, yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and it definitely solved the problem that I needed issue with right now. Mm-hmm. So it's like, for the, for the entrepreneurs that's listening, if you're in that space where like you're trying to figure it out, like, am I doing the right thing? Chances are you is. It's just a setback right now. You know, trust your, trust your gut. Uh, nurture your network or maybe tap into your network and, and keep going because you'll figure it out because that anxiety is good for you. Because once I figured that out, I said, oh, I'm selling on eBay the rest of my life. You know, <laughs> I, I take spur, I, I take breaks in between. Right, right. But, but, you know, let's say you you got a house with children. They're going, they're going to outgrow clothes, toys, yeah. video games. You can resell all that stuff on eBay. And I say specifically eBay because it's a faster sale. Can you do it on Amazon? Yes. Can you do it on Macari? Yes. My recommendation is just eBay, though, because it's fast and anyone can do it. You can just pick up your phone, boom, boom, boom. You don't have to go through any yeah. areas as you would uh, Amazon. Yo, something I always appreciated about you, um, just when we were having some of our previous discussions about getting started podcasting was your emphasis on just getting started, right? A lot of times entrepreneurs, we tend to get in our own way in terms of like wanting the perfect setup, the perfect equipment, the perfect team, the perfect me situation (laughs) before putting their product out, right? It's like you want the perfect product, right? And, and, And one of the things that me and Chris always talk about there's a there's a there's a concept called MVP, minimum viable product, and Apple did this with the first iPhone, right? The first iPhone wasn't as good or as developed as the second iPhone or as a third or fourth or fifth, but they had to put something out there to just get started, right? The, the, they have to put the first product out there. You know, when you when you're putting it out, you know there's things that you want to add in version two and version three and version four. You already kind of see them, but I feel like the successful companies and successful entrepreneurs don't let that hold them back. Whereas a lot of other people will let that hold them back. Like just over the years, uh, you know, I used to, you know, sell websites for a living and there would be so many entrepreneurs who had great products, great things, but then they want this like $50,000 website. And it's like, that's the thing that's holding you back. And like in reality, you could have just built a landing page, put your product out there, get some feedback, and and shift and, and adapt from there. And it's the same thing with podcasts and same thing with just with everything in life almost, right? Like you got to like take that first step regardless of how that first step looks to be able to get, you know, feedback from that step and then take the next steps more efficiently. And um, I just, I just remember you really emphasizing that to me in terms of like, you know, I'm like, oh man, I need the production, I need this, I need that. He's like, yo, just get started. That's like the best advice I can give you. And that like really hit for me because 
that's something that I have to, you know, just in my capacity is consulting with other entrepreneurs, helping them get their projects off the ground. That's something that I have to like hammer hold a lot. So, so a good percentage of the people I work with is like, yo, just get that phase one out there, that MVP out there. And then from there, you, you need, you'll, you'll have so much more to go on in terms of taking that next step than the next step after that. That's one of the hardest things for me because uh, one of the reasons it took us so long to start this podcast um, was because I need that. Like The amount of hours I spent messing with the lights to make me look like this right now and having the background that I could change the color of the background and getting the right microphone and even this, my microphone runs through Adobe Audition, which masters it out, which then sends it back to, to what you're hearing now. My my video goes from the webcam through different filters, through OBS to what you're seeing. Like, uh, But it, that's something I like, that production side. I've always done the creative side. I was like producing the stuff. So for me, like I want it to look really produced before I'm willing to put something out. So that's always been one of my big things is uh, I, I hate doing that, like just get started and throw it together because I want it to look like an Apple production or a Hollywood production if I'm going to do it because that's the part the producing is the part that I like. Nah, but then, like, I'm not a big so, fan of the being on camera. And so this this looks good now, right? But just think about this, right? We started dabbling. We've been working together for, over, I think, a decade, over a decade. But we started dabbling with podcasts before COVID. Like yeah. before COVID. And that would always be the thing that kind of held us up from like really consistently going with it was the production, was the need to have this highly produced thing. And you know, we had a whole green screen studio at some at one point in my basement. Yep, yep. But it, it just looking back, looking back, it's like, oh man, I would have really appreciated the consistency. And just putting stuff out there and all the things that we could have learned through that process. Like, if I had to do it all over again, right? Like, I would have focused a little bit less on production, focused more on consistency, just getting it out there, putting it out there. And knowing that the production is going to naturally elevate as you do it. As you keep consistently putting product out, putting putting mm -hmm. content out. Um, whereas, you know, we, we waited till 2024... 2023, 2024. <laughs> we got the production down, though. The production's going to look nice, right? Like, we got the real shine rods, we will produce. But we had to wait to 2024 to get started. So, you know, don't be like us, entrepreneurs, if you're listening. Um, do not let perfection become the enemy of progress. Research and believe in the concept of MVP, your minimum viable product. Put it out there. Get feedback. Get feedback because you might spend your time highly producing something. And then the whole concept behind it just doesn't really hit connect with the audience. And then you got to go back and you got to go back to square Do one. Do it again. You waste your time creating this elaborate intro from scratch, all these visual effects. You got to switch them up, right? Like, so. <laughs> I've done it. <laughs> That's me. That's There's nothing wrong with it, however. Because one thing about it, Chris, you understand your capacity. Mm -hmm. You know that this is what you want to do. This is how you want to do it. And you can do it. You know, right, right. Um, a lot of times when I when I speak with people, they don't know anything. They just they just want to do a show, you know. And it's like, all right, you want to do a show, but realize how much you still got to learn. You know, that's why I emphasize. Well, don't focus on your production right off the bat because you're gonna have to learn how. Um, when I first started, I didn't know how to edit any audio. Now I know three different softwares. I could do GarageBand, I could do Audacity, and right now, currently, I'm using Reaper, which I absolutely love. It, Reaper's it, good, and I've used it. Yeah, I, and, it, and it takes it takes time to get there. But if you want to get a buddy of something, and someone you have good chemistry with, and have these conversations, and it, it becomes, it's more of a mental thing. It becomes real. Once you mm -hmm. put it out there and everybody can hear it, it's real. And then you you tweak from there. And now, once you made a commitment to do it, now get on your production. You know, actually, I would say get on your if you're if you're going to be consistent on doing it, your the production is your next step. You want to how how mm -hmm. can you sound better? All right, I need to buy a microphone. All right, I need a camera. 
or a webcam, whatever that is. You know what I'm saying? Just just grow from there because a lot of just people do a little I, bit better each time you do it. Pick one thing. Don't try to do everything at once. Pick, yeah. Like you said, like, all right, t- this week I'm going to focus on how can I make my audio better? And right. even if it's something as simple as learning how to route it through, like even e- either getting a soundboard or learning to route it digitally through something like Adobe Audition, you can keep the same mic and just add some compression in Audition. Yep. So it's, it's easy. And another thing I want people to avoid is um, sometimes this might not be for you. Now, you might need to figure that out. But I don't want someone to figure it out, oh, this is not for me, and then I didn't spend all this money on equipment, and now you got to resell mm-hmm. it, and you're not going to get all your money back if you resell it. Um, that's even, I, I shared this to you guys on the back end, that's happened to me, buying, taking that money I, I got, and buying something I didn't even end up using. You know, at the if you at, could see this side of my office, it is full of all of the things I bought that I don't need anymore. <laughs> But I needed it that moment. You're at, at that moment. Yeah, so just a pile of that crap. The shit. The computer's sitting back over here somewhere. Uh, there's a computers I needed, but I don't need. <laughs> right. Well, my, advice, my, my, my my advice is just find a topic. Man. Find a topic that you, you're passionate about. Right. Find a topic that you could talk about, regardless of your audio, regardless of their production, regardless of your camera. Something that you can just talk about that you would talk about for hours on end naturally regardless right find a part mm-hmm. that you would have these conversations with hours on end naturally and like that's such a like that's such a bigger core right because it's like i don't really care if i'm watching if i need if i'm searching for some content whether it's a solution for a problem i'm trying i'm having or i'm just trying to get smarter at something or whatever it is i'm trying to real i'm searching for some content if i find content that hits the it's the spot, right? The, the the message in that content is giving me the solution of what I'm looking for, looking for, right? I don't care how that video is filmed, right? If the answer is being conveyed to me in an efficient manner, you could be on a 1980s spotty cell phone footage. Oh, they might not have had cell phones in 1980, but you know what I'm talking about, right? Like you could be grainy. I don't care, right? As long as I like, I'm getting that message. If you're, if I'm trying to figure out the answer to four, and you're telling me two plus two equals four, and that's the right answer, mm-hmm. I don't, that's all I need. That's really all I need. And you know, a lot of us, we, you know, there's just vanity, right? We want we want things to look and come across a certain way, but we don't. We we shoot ourselves in the foot in terms of limiting what we can put out right now by wanting to wait and put out something that's that looks a certain way but um you know just tying ai into into podcast yeah i was gonna say i want to i want to steer this back to ai uh and bring it back to uh go ahead no you start again so are you seeing like what 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 trends are you seeing parish in terms of like ai impacting the podcasting industry specifically and also like it's any thoughts in terms of like podcasters leveraging ai and you know, we we can all build on this topic, but I just wanted to kind of tap in with you first. Um, the the main the main thing with um, with AI and podcasting, a lot of it is a lot of it is post production. Um, I realized after talking with you guys yesterday, I realized I've been using an AI tool um, the whole time, and it's called um, Alphonic. Ah. Alphonic okay. is a is an AI tool that just that just cleans up your audio. You know, after I do my edits and, and clean up the stuff, I run it through Alphonic. It's like a, a deep clean of your audio. And then I put that deep clean out into the into the world. So a lot of it is um it's post-production. And a lot of these podcasting hosts, they're also implementing AI to write your show notes, to um, help clean up your art, article, that your audio, excuse me, because um, we got a lot of magic editors out there now um buzz mm-hmm. Brown has one um the script they've they've always been a uh, they always been a place of using ai in the podcasting space which that's a platform i recommend um uh, most of adobe it adobe has one too adobe has a uh, adobe podcast yeah yeah and and also i see a lot of um after that tool you guys gave me there are a lot of tools so that you can chop up your 
your episodes and you could put those out on social media so you can create content. Um, the two you told me about was Upis and Vizard. Vizard, Vizard, Vizard yeah. yes. Yeah, Vizard. Which we'll put I, those links in the description. I promise I'm yeah. going to remember this time. Yeah, um, yeah, that saves a lot of time. That saves a lot of time. Um, another one you can use is... Um, I'm not sure if it's exactly AI. It may have some AI elements, but that's Headliner. Headliner. What's that one do? Headliner. It it takes your um your audio podcast and creates an audiogram, and you could put it on the YouTube. So gotcha. Say, yeah, yeah, that's that's what it does. Um, and you could also chop up audio clips with it too. Um, okay. that part, that part, I haven't seen the AI feature because you still have to manually do it as far as right, that. right. But, I'm sure it's coming. Everything's building AI into it. Yeah, but as far as this podcasting space, it's it is making it easier. Like a lot of the mundane things, such as like writing your show notes. You know, there's platforms that are completely writing your show notes for you, um, mm-hmm. and and there's audio. There are, there are um, audio AI to where they're replacing, like, let's say, like, I'm not used to pop filter right here, right? So my P's and B's are going to stand out. Just like an app, like, descriptive will fix it. Mm-hmm. And I didn't have to go out and buy no extra equipment or anything like that. Everything was fixed within the AI. It reads my voice. And then it corrects my edits based off what the AI voice is generated from me. Like me. So, right. um... I've, I'm I'm still kind of old school, y'all. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, I, I still like the manual. I still like to manually go in and edit my episodes, and then hit it with the AI. But I am leaning more towards adding more AI to my arsenal because it does free up a lot of time. Like um, what I did with Visit yesterday, that conversation was an hour and thirty minutes. Mm-hmm. It, it chopped all that up in less than five minutes. Let's yeah, yeah. And, and and now I have all these clips I could use and I could put out on social media whenever I'm ready. So it's like that's 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 definitely a game changer for me because normally to take the if you have an hour episode, you're gonna at least take an hour to listen to it. At least. So. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, at least. And then you're gonna stop and make corrections and it takes time. Cut so, out yeah, silence. Yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah. Like yeah. five hour yeah. four hours yeah. to, to make that many clips, add subtitles, add the, the caption. That's like, yep. a, that's like yep. a definitely a two to five hour endeavor that that you're now getting done for you in five minutes. So it's like in terms of getting the most out of your content, like it's exponentially. And, and but th- but that's great though, um, because we could use AI in replace of the equipment that we have. Mm-hmm. You know, it's more reason for you if anybody's listening or watching this you say hey I want to start a podcast or podcast YouTube it, it's our inter- it's our intertwining you have a phone most people have an iPhone you can start there yep pre- pre- do three to four shows figure out what you want to talk about even even if you don't want to commit to it right now, start and see how how it feels, yeah, and build from there, you know, and utilize some of the AI to help you with your production, because like looking at you guys' production here, this looks great, and yeah, this is a, a tool it's... called Streamyard. Uh, you put us onto this actually. Mm-hmm. Which lets all of the like so anything you're looking at right now, uh, if you're watching this on YouTube. All of the changes, the camera changes, switching who you see on the screen, all the background, all these overlays that are popping up and going away. This is being done live just by clicking a couple of buttons that were pre-set up in this interface. So it, it makes all the, this just by itself takes out hours and hours of post editing, whereas before you'd have to have three different recordings and you'd have to compile it together. And again, this isn't necessarily AI, but it's just a really, really useful tool to make, like you said, that post editing process way easier. Cause the sitting here talking part, this is the easy part. It's yeah. what happens after that. That's really time consuming. Uh, I, I, I agree. I agree. And, and for the record, 
StreamYard has a free version. So it's like you can really try it out yep. and see if you like it. And, and it's very easy to do. You know, in the beginning, when I started off, I was using Zoom. And uh, yeah, yeah. And a lot of people, even to this day, said, I don't use Zoom. Yeah. Well, with StreamYard, you don't have to worry about that. Send them a link, click the link. Bam, you in a row. Easy. I'll put a link in the description of this video as well. Check out StreamYard. Uh, like Paris said, you can check it out for free. So definitely suggest it. Highly recommended. But I definitely I have, agree, man. I, agree, man. No. I have a question for y'all because you guys are the AI professionals. How much Ready, has, hit me. How has AI impacted you guys' show up until this point? <laughs> I use it for everything because uh, I'm the one that handles the post production. So um, obviously, Streamyard handles the actual like uh, live production, which sometimes is better than worse. Sometimes my ADHD uh, takes me away, and you just look at Ivan and I straight through for an hour. Uh, today's uh, days like today, I'm a little bit better at kind of shifting around. But once I export it out, um, the very first episode. Uh, I, I took the recording of just me and the recording of Ivan and the recording of both of us together. And I manually did that, adding those switches, adding the overlays and days day. We recorded on like a Tuesday and it wasn't ready until Friday. So nowadays I take in the very first thing, I just take it exactly as it is, as you see it on screen and I export it out and I actually use a tool called CapCut first. Uh, CapCut's actually a video editor built by TikTok. And the reason I use CapCut first is they have an AI tool that lets you enhance the video quality. So especially like if there's any noise, if, if it's like a, this is a 1080p video, it basically doubles the amount of pixels or triples the amount of pixels to enhance the visual of all of the video all at once. Uh, a couple limitations, it can only do like 15 minute clips, but I just go in chop it up into small 15 minute clips and it'll automatically enhance it. And then right in CapCut as well, you can, I don't use it in, I don't do it in CapCut, but you can also enhance the audio. So you can do vocal isolation, uh, noise reduction, and it, it'll do all right in that same video editor. It'll also generate the, trans, the written transcript of the video for me, right in CapCut and create captions on screen in any style that you really want so that you can have those that you can upload right to YouTube. Uh, you can download the SRT file right out of CapCut. So it did, so right there, then I export it out and I put it over to Adobe Premiere because they have a, that's where I do the vocal enhancement for the video because they have Adobe Podcast built into it. So I let Adobe take the audio and do the audio and it does the auto leveling. So like sometimes like I'll be louder, Ivan will be louder or our intro will be loud. And it basically levels the audio across the entire video. And in addition to that, it'll enhance the audio. Um, like you said, it'll it'll put the pop filter in. It'll do the de -er, So you don't have those P's and you don't have like the. If you, I'm not going to explain what a de -er is to the wide audience. You know what a de -er is, right? Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> that's all I needed. Um, but but it takes care of all of that and then gives me a nice, clean audio for the video as well. And then from there, I export it. That's what I use to upload to YouTube. I have the SRT for the captions that I got right from um, right out of CapCut. And then I put that the full uh, full text transcript into ChatGPT, Anthropic, uh, Claude 3 uh, and AI. And I give it the entire transcript of the entire podcast episode, and I use it to help me write the timeline, uh, you know, from this time to this time, here's what we're talking about. Uh, I also use it to help me write my descriptions for YouTube, help me come up with a title for the episode, and but because it, it has everything we've talked about now. You give it all of that information and it helps with it helps me come up with the YouTube tags. It helps me come up with the hashtags. To, it helps me create the description in an SEO format. So that way it'll help with discoverability when the video is posted on YouTube. Uh, and then finally, we put it into that wizard tool that you were talking about earlier to chop up the episode after it's up on YouTube so that we have those little short form content in the vertical format so that we could post it out to like TikTok or Instagram Reels and out to other social media platforms. 
So every step of the way from the time I hit end recording till the time everyone sees anything or hears anything, I use AI through that whole process. Even before that, just within like the ideation process. So like, uh, you know, last month for our first four episodes, we focused on AI for entrepreneurship, for entrepreneurs. And um, I wanted to kind of break that down into like four different episodes. So I kind of was toying around with the AI and just, you know, telling them what we're trying to, what we're looking to do with the podcast and, you know, kind of had it break, break down four different segments. So like the first week was uh, kind of like an introduction, like what's, you know, AI for entrepreneurs, kind of like an overview. The second week was like, where is it going as an entrepreneur? What tools might you want to be looking out for? The third week was, I forget the specifics, but there was like four different kind of sub niches or subtopics that I used the AI to kind of help plan out. And then even breaking down just kind of the idea of how the show should flow and, you know, topics within topics and whatnot. So from ideation, to creation, to post-production, and then even from after that, just uh, you know, chopping up that, that 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 completed one hour or however long that content is, chopping it up into little segments that we can then use on social media. We literally use AI from start to finish to make that process as as efficient. Yeah. Now, if I can replace me with an AI avatar where I don't even need to be on the show anymore, but still be yeah. on the show, I will do that too. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be sweet. <laughs> it, it'll just look like me. It'll sound like me. And uh, just you'll just be chatting with ChatGPT instead. <laughs> the ChatGPT Chris version. Chris yeah, yeah. If, if, if that's available, I will do that too. Actually, to be fair, it is available. It's just not very good yet. I was going to say, it is, it is available. I could do that. It's just not very good. You'd know. I said, can we create a podcast with just AI? Just talking yes. to each yes. other? Yes. Yes. Right, right now, today. Yeah. Interesting. That's some interesting ideas now. I was going to say, I've, maybe I'll do an episode on that, where I'll literally just make a whole episode, like a 10-minute episode, mm -hmm. where we just let AI talk to itself. Or like a Chris and Ivan version, but the AI version. To make oh, that you like, Ivan Avatar, like had him like kind of do like a little like infuse it with some Ivan personality, some Chris personality. <laughs> Let him just go. I will watch. There's a 10 minute segment called "We're Not Here." Too. I would want to watch that. Actually, we should <laughs> yeah. do it with them. <laughs> we, do do it. Can we do like me and you with our two avatars. That'd be yes. Interesting. Yes, I, 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 I can absolutely make that. I can build that. I want to see that. I definitely want to see that. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to add it to my never-ending pile. Of, like, it might not be in the next couple of weeks. Uh, I've got a lot on my plate, but we will do that episode, or at least that segment. It'll, I, I will literally call the segment called We're Not Here. <laughs> got to add that in the Stay tuned, y'all. It's coming soon. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming soon. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah we'll build that and we'll oh, see what it talks man. about oh man this, this is awesome gentlemen i'm having a lot of fun oh man appreciate your time man appreciate your time appreciate the conversation yeah we're coming up on about an hour and a half so i do want to keep it around this amount of time but i mean if, if there's anything else we want to talk about we're good um we got the time but if, if we're i don't know what i'm really saying let's do you have any other subjects? Do we have <laughs> lights? You know, you know, you know when you're in the club and the lights start coming on. But no, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> looking around, like, like what are we doing? On. Are we going lights home? Are we going to another club? What are we? What's going on? <laughs> is is it is it cool? I shout some people out. A hundred percent. Well, well I'm, first, hold on. I'm gonna give you the stage. Production. Ah, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, see, that's production, ladies and gentlemen. Um, <laughs> Uh, well, first, I I like to shout out um, the Bullish Picks podcast. My man, um, Ken Blake Surreal. We've been we've been at it for almost three years now. Um, nice um, audio only show. You know, what I'm saying it's all only audio only, and we're helping people navigate through the stock market. You know, what I'm saying it's an easy listening. We on all major platforms. Uh, most episodes are. No more than 25 minutes. So you can get your get your stock game quick. You know what I'm saying? And you can get it while you're on your way to work. Um also like to salute the pre-market movers. Well, let me let me just piggyback off of that real quick. Yo, Ken is my guy. I can put the okay. camera on me. Yo, Ken is my guy. I got you. 
and he's one of the guys that kind of introduced me and Parrish. Um, he's all, he's about to go in the free market as well. Shout out to that. Oh, cool. But, yo, uh, definitely tap in with Ken, uh, Bullish Picks podcast. He's, he, especially when it comes to, like, fundamental analysis. He's really big on understanding the companies, understanding, like, just the, uh, the, the details that goes into, like, smart investments. And more than that, he's just a good guy, yo. Definitely tap in with Ken. I, absolutely. Uh, a- absolutely. Yep. And um and he's also one of the proprietors of um the pre market movers. Now nah, this is movers. Where, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yep. Whoa. Yeah, yeah. Um yeah. me and Ivy Lee, we we are both a part of this community. Um every Tuesday, Thursday, um, seven thirty AM Eastern, six thirty central on Twitter spaces or X spaces. You know, you could tap in live with us or you could check out a recording. You know, we talk about the stock market. We talk crypto. We talk real estate. Shoot, sure, we even broke down movies and talked about how they pertain to real life events in the stock market or whatever financial, whatever we can connect the financials. We do a lot of artificial and, intelligence talk in that in that community as well. Um, obviously, more specifically from how it affects the markets, the stock market, uh, business industry. Uh, Ken also is. Uh, works within that industry 4.0 so we touch in touch on robotics it's just a good good way to wake up good first conversation of the day 7 30 tuesdays thursdays eastern time definitely chat tap in with your market movers let me just stop hijacking your shout out that, that was it it was just those two <laughs> you know, here's my Bless, guy the market movers. <laughs> it's also my community it's, it's it's all good because you know a lot of times you're on stage with me too. So it's like and, and it's a good community and and more importantly, it's free. You know, everything I'm mentioning here is free. You know what I'm saying? It all it costs is your attention, you know, and not much attention. You know what I'm saying? These are things you can do while you're going to work or you're in school, you're working out, whatever it is. You know what I'm saying? We understand that a lot of times people don't have time to sit and watch something, especially um, if we're targeting entrepreneurs and prospective entrepreneurs, don't really have the time to sit always. So we got some audio content for you to help help, help feed your brain. You know, so so tap into those. And of course, don't forget about the entrepreneur kickback. You know what I'm saying? You can check out both of me and Ivan Lee's episodes and maybe you can have you guys come on. We could talk even more. AI. I'm in. Um, but um, entrepreneur kickback is we're given the real perspective of entrepreneurship, just like the real perspective I gave feeling anxious and, and afraid to figure out what I was going to do until I figured out eBay was still a tool I can use that really helped me during my situation. And it, it's a lot of stories like that. I've, I've heard a, a nice number now up until this point, and I think it's healthy for all entrepreneurs or prospective entrepreneurs to tap in because you realize that you're not alone in a lot of instances based depending on where you are in your journey. You're not alone. Tap in and you can, you can build a network from it too. Definitely do. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm done with my shout outs. I ain't going to keep going. You know what I'm saying? All right, I got a shout out. No, I don't. I don't. I'm going to shout out me just because I felt left out. So... <laughs> Yeah, hey, shout out to Chris. Shout out to Chris. I exist to Jeff, here shout still. He's, just, he's also within the yes. community. Shout out to Jeff. Yes, yes. Uh, um, uh, excuse me. Um, yes, uh, career yeah. fireside. Just worldwide. Jessica worldwide. Davis. Um, her her business is she she helps people get the most out of their jobs, preferably six figures out of your your nine to five your career. Um, she has a master's degree. Um, she. She does magic with, with resumes, and she also gives a great deal of resources as far as to people who are looking to find a job, to get a better job, or grow within their company. It's, 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 she's, she's, a, she's a wizard. And um, let's see, we have to take a break on her shows, but they're coming back out soon. No, also, a founding member of the Free Market Movers, one of the things I really like appreciate about that community, it's not just information for entrepreneurs, it's it's for everyone, right? And like so even if you even if you have a nine to five and you're married to that lifestyle, she helps you 
advance within that nine to five and to find better jobs within that same industry or whatever industry you're in and, and like just help navigate what training, what certification you need to move up. And, you know, it's, it's always a process. If you're going to climb the ladder, you might as well have a guide that specialize in helping you climb that ladder more efficiently. And that's what, that's what World of Jess does. Shout out, shout out to Jess. And yeah. Just, and, we'll and if you want to check that out, um, that's resumebadge.com. And we'll put that link in the description as well. Uh, again, I'm going gonna, gonna gonna to do better. I'm, gonna, I'm writing them down, y'all. I'm writing them down this time. I know what links I have to put in those descriptions. I always forget. Uh, what was that again? Resume badge. <laughs> I got it. I got it. It's going in that description. Yeah, I got my notes. Yeah, that's uh, Ivan Lee just broke down our uh, our our super team of pre market movers. We're kind of like Voltron or Power Rangers, depending on how old you are. <laughs> but <laughs> you know, that's our that's that's our dynamic. Uh, salute to Pitts Panura too. We we we, we forgot about. It. Yes, sir. Pitts. Yeah. But um, yeah, man. So yeah, again, happy to announce. Um, I kind of casually mentioned that earlier. We're all, we're we're joining. We're we've been accepted. We're part of the the Patent House network, a community of podcasters. Um, look forward to being on more of those shows. Look forward to having them more on our show. Look forward to putting out more episodes in the coming weeks. And um, this has been a fun one. This has been episode six. Is this episode six? Five, five. So five. This is five. five. Sorry to get I'm to the point where I'm, I'm number one, right? You are. You are our very first guest. Very first four were just me and Ivan yeah. talking to ourselves. Hey, we're starting to get to the point. You know how you get old, you start forgetting your age. See, when it was episode <laughs> two, episode three, I knew exactly what episode it was. Now it's like five, six, seven. I don't remember. Like, you know, yeah, we got there. this down now. But, oh, yeah. um, but you know, to be continued, you'll, you'll see us. Yeah, more like, on. share, follow all those fun things you're supposed to say. Those are very important. You follow us, <clears throat> keeps us motivated to keep doing this. I say it every week, but I mean it. <laughs> hey, Paris, before we're out, just let them know where to find you. Um, um, you can find me on um, on uh, Instagram and Facebook, Entrepreneur Kickback. Also, you can check out the Entrepreneur Kickback on um on all podcasting platforms. Um, and you can also find me uh Entrepreneur Kickback on TikTok. Yep, yep, that's mainly where I'm where I'm not a big social media guy, but that's a good way to connect with me. Um, if you wanna if you wanna shoot me an email, um, shoot me an email at entrepreneurkickback at gmail. You know, I answer any questions. I'm an open book. You know, I'm a very approachable guy. You know. Um, I would give up my number, but that might not be the best idea. But <laughs> no, no, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> but you can't tap in with Parrish. You, you can't tap with Par- tap in live with Parrish and myself, 7:30 Tuesdays, Thursdays, Eastern Time, AM on Pre Market Movers on Twitter. Well, formerly known as Twitter, now known as X. Um, but that's it, man. Episode five. Yo, another one in the book. Episode five. Thanks for joining All right, us. guys. We'll see you next week. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for coming on today. It was really fun. Oh, yeah. Much, much more fun episode than we normally have. This, this is the first of many, man. First of many. And I and I and and, and I, I I love you guys' show and I appreciate y'all for the invite. Oh man, appreciate you for the time, man. Yep. Episode All five. Right. See everyone next week. Let's talk. Let's talk. Let's talk. Let's talk.